Bonjour et bienvenue. Hello everyone, uh, welcome to your next chemistry lesson. This chemistry lesson is on iodine, where we get iodine from uh, and how it was actually discovered. Over the next few lessons, what we're going to be doing is looking through each of the halogens in turn about their origin story. Yes, we are doing the origin story of the halogens. I feel as if there should be a movie trailer on right now, but uh, there's not. So let's start by looking at what we already know about iodine, what uses we've heard of for iodine before. So previous knowledge about iodine. As this is a pre-recorded video, obviously I don't have the ability to converse with you about this. So what we'll do is we'll go over this in a webinar and let's find out what you already know. On Edmodo, I posted this picture. What does this have to do with iodine? What about this one? What has this got to do with iodine? So let's have a look for the stimulus behind why iodine was actually discovered. Uh, and it comes from the early 19th century. So uh, the picture of this fellow here, does anyone know who that is? That is Monsieur Bonaparte, Napoleon. And I'm, I'm pretty rubbish at history, but I do know in the early 19th century, there was a lot of war going on. Uh, and France was a big part of that, okay? Wars between France, Spain, UK, Russia, Belgium, the Hundred Years' War. There's all sorts of different wars going on in the early 19th century. Um, and that prompted a need. Now, the need was for nitrates. So nitrates are a key component in most explosives. Um, so you've probably all heard of T N T T N T is tri nitro toluene uh, it's linked to dynamite and nitroglycerin here where the N bit here tri nitro toluene nitrogen nitrates okay so a lot of explosives weapons do need nitrates in order to be able to function so there's a huge push on an industrial level to get more nitrates. Um, as you may know from GCSE, nitrates are also very, very important for fertilizers. But this was before the harbor process. Nitrogen was not very easy to obtain at all. So what Napoleon did and some other governments around the world is they put out to the scientists and they said, look, we need you to get these nitrates somehow. So lots of scientists started doing different research and tried to extract nitrates from different things. D'accord. This brings us to Bernard Crotois. Il était un grand de chimie. Uh, and what he wanted to do is he tried to get nitrates out of seaweed. Farmers had long known that putting seaweed on the fields helped plants grow. So uh, in certain places in Scotland, that the picture in the middle there is from Scotland. The farmers around there harvested this. They just picked it up as it washed up on the beach, put it on their fields. The fields grew really nicely. Um, and they knew at this point that that was potentially linked to nitrates because nitrates help plants grow. So Bernard Cotois, knowing this, he decided to try and get nitrates out of this. Um, and in the nicest possible way, he failed massively. Uh, he did not get nitrates in, but along with a lot of other great scientists, uh, what he actually discovered, yes, not what he intended, but arguably was still very good and very, very useful. As you can see here on the right hand side, this was a paper that he actually published. There's his name, Bernard Cotrois, uh, La découverte de l'iode, so uh, the discovery of the iodine, basically. So he discovered iodine when he was actually looking for nitrates. Now, if we were in lesson at this point, the last three years, we've actually done this as a practical. We, we tried to recreate what he did. Uh, the first time we did it, it didn't work particularly well. The second time we got some small quantities of iodine and the third time we got even more iodine. So it was getting better and better. So I was really excited at seeing if you lot could actually follow the instructions um, and actually do the practical really, really well and get yourself some iodine. But unfortunately, obviously we are not in. So what I'll do is I'll show you an overview of what is going on. And then what you're going to have to do is look at those parts of the method and explain what bits are done and why. 
two ago, if we were in lesson, this is the method that I would have given you uh, and the equipment list. I will send out a copy of this over Edmodo to my students and pop it on TES for students that are not mine. So we can see here the chemicals that we've got here. They're not particularly uh, hard to come by or too bad uh, in terms of safety. So we've got hydrogen peroxide, which is an irritant. You've got to be careful with that. It does act as a bleach as well. Uh, sulfuric acid, it's only one molar, so it's just an irritant there. Uh, and cyclohexane is probably the worst out of them uh, just because it's highly flammable, harmful uh, via inhalation in particular, and dangerous for the environment. So the cyclohexane we need to keep in uh, fume cupboards and away from fire. can see here it does actually say all solvent residues must be placed in a container in a fume cupboard for subsequent disposal. So usually in the lab when we do this what I would do is I'd get your seaweed powder, well I'd get pure seaweed um, and I'd need to break that down somehow. So in seaweed there are lots of stuff there, there's obviously uh, chlorophyll, there's other biology type words, um, there'll be all the sort of leafy structures, there might be a waxy cuticle layer on it. So we're not looking for all of that, we're just looking for the iodine within that. So what I would do to try and get that out is chop it all up. That helps start to break down the larger structures in there. Uh, and then best way to do it that we've found is burn it. Okay, so we'd get it nice and dry. First off, dry it out and then incinerate it. When you incinerate it, that again is going to get rid of any sort of excess organic material and you're going to be left with just a fine ash. So when we get the ash, what we do is boil it up with some purified water, distilled water. Why might we use that? Have a think about that. And do hot filtration. Turn off the Bunsen burner. Well, yeah, of course we're going to turn off the Bunsen burner. We've got cyclohexane running around. Collect the clear filtrate in a second beaker and allow to cool. We're adding sulfuric acid. What is sulfuric acid adding to that? Hmm, H plus ions. Are we going to get a change of oxidation state potentially happening there? Then followed by 10 centimetre cubed of hydrogen peroxide. Again, what is that hydrogen peroxide going to be doing? Think about oxidation, think about reduction. What's going to be going on there? Observe the colour change. Transfer the mixture to a separating funnel. Um, these are really helpful bits of kit. Uh, I will attach a video to this one uh, to show you how we use separating funnels. Stopper it, secure it with your thumb, shake vigorously, gentle inversions. Remember we did a shaky, shaky dance uh, back in Elements of Life. That's what this is. Release any pressure that's been built up. Yeah, great technique again. Um, allow the layers to separate, observe the colour and use it to identify which layer is the halogenated cyclohexane. So in a previous lesson, we talked about colours that the halogens take in aqueous solutions and in organic solutions. So you should know what colour that should go. Run off the lower aqueous layer, discard down the sink with running water, and run the cyclohexane layer into an evaporating basin and set aside in the teacher's fume cupboard. Um, we've found that if you leave it for a short period of time, uh, you do get some crystals start forming. Um, however, if you leave it for too long, um, the iodine's a bit too volatile and it will evaporate completely. So that's the method that we would be following if we had this in lesson. Here you can see uh, two links to YouTube of people trying to recreate this experiment as well. If you have a look at the top right, I've put a little card here on YouTube so you can access those videos from this point. Okay, so based on that method and the videos that you've watched, can you please try to answer these questions? So I'm going to stop the video for now these questions are yours to answer. We will review this in the webinar next time. Thank you for listening. Hope this has been useful. Be gone, minions of science. Be gone.